Yes, that is correct. Smith & Wesson Performance Center. And it just gives you a good idea that whatever's inside this case is probably going to be a lot of fun. I think it will be. Let's take a first look. The Performance Center M&P 40L Core Ported. There's a mouthful. And it almost looks like a handful. Something tells me this is going to be an awful lot of fun to shoot. So let's talk about just the high level basics. Then we'll get this thing out and we will shoot it. So first and foremost, this gun is just absolutely gorgeous. It's got all of the great lines of the M&P line, which I like. And if you don't like it, well then, you know, your tastes are different. But I like the looks and the feel of the M&P. This one certainly has all of that going for it and a whole lot more. It certainly has the cool factor of the ported barrel and the ported slide. Stainless steel heavy barrel, stainless steel slide, of course, which is treated with a black finish. Polymer framed, striker fired. This has the raised sights front and rear. The idea here, I think, is so that we can co-witness with a red dot optic. We're going to put that to the test, too. Five inch barrel, heavy barrel. Stainless steel. Barrel is ported. Take a look there. You can see those port holes near the front of the barrel. That is to relieve pressure and manage recoil. Keep this gun shooting flat. Steel guide rod. Everything else is very much same, same, M&P wise. With another big exception, right back here, see where it says core. Well, this plate, this cover comes off. You can see the two screws. Take those screws out, this plate comes off. And there's a cutout in the slide to accept a red dot optic. And we are definitely going to put that to the test. The uh, back strap or palm swell, this is really an entire piece. You can see the darker colored and differently textured piece here on the back strap. That is removable and can be replaced with either of these two, either the small or the large. Large one has a beaver tail, small does not. Medium is the one that's on the gun when it ships. Magazines are 15 round capacity, so we have a 15 plus one capacity in the pistol. Good quality Smith & Wesson M&P magazines. Pistol comes with two. I added a third just to make sure I've got enough. And we have mounting plates for our optic. So we can put, again, we can put an electronic red dot optic on this gun and we have different plates configured with different types of mounting hole patterns to accept major brands. Hopefully mine will fit and we'll get that on there. We will definitely give that a test run. And we also have a tiny little hex head here for, I believe this is to adjust our trigger stop. This gun does come with a trigger stop. You can see it there beneath my, or above my thumb. So far, just in a little bit of dry firing, and I have to say, I like the way this trigger feels. Nice and crisp. Very, very, very crisp. None of that squishiness that M&P triggers get, uh, you know, get bashed for a lot. The reset, very short, 
That's it right there, and you heard it. Nice tactile feedback. And then, no more take up, and you're right back at the brake. So I think I'm going to really enjoy this trigger. And again, we do have an adjustable trigger stop, so that we can make sure we have no over travel at all. Does come with ambidextrous slide stop, slide release controls, as do all MP pistols. Magazine catch or mag release is reversible. So if you're a lefty, you can easily switch this over to a left handed pistol. Okay, some of the key specifications. I talked about the barrel. Barrel's made out of stainless steel. It is a five inch long barrel and it is ported. Overall length of this pistol, stem to stern, is eight and a half inches. So it's a relatively long handgun. 24.7 ounces is the published weight. That would be with an empty magazine. So just under 25 ounces, empty. Slide is stainless steel, also coated with a black finish that's, um, I've found to be on, on other MMPs, very durable um, finish. I like it. That is about it. Again, these sights are just a three dot contrast sight. They're not night sights. And there is no fiber optic front sight as you would find on the MMP Pro. Because the main idea with this pistol is that you're going to mount an optic on here. So you're going to put a red dot, an electronic sight on this pistol and use that as your primary. So I'll play with that. I'll bring you along. We'll see if we can get that done. We'll get this thing outside. It just happens to be the 4th of July. So we will definitely celebrate America's independence the way it was meant to be celebrated with a bang or two or a hundred or so. Okay, so it's 4th of July. Got something new from the Smith & Wesson Performance Center. Gonna have a little private celebration, make some noise. And I thought, you know, what better first hundred to put through this gun than a combination of Freedom Munitions and Federal American Eagle. 40 Smith & Wesson. Let's load this thing up and start putting some rounds down range. 15 round magazine. Nice capacity for a 40. Definitely appreciated at the range. Magazines load nice. That 15th round goes in without any kind of effort at all. Using a uh, mag loader, of course. I have not yet ever fired a ported Smith & Wesson M&P, so I'm really looking forward to the experience here in a moment. I'm putting the first shots through this ported barrel. Okay, I've got uh, three magazines loaded and I've got my Burris red dot optic on this pistol and I think I'm about ready to go. Let's start shooting it. Smith & Wesson Performance Center, M&P, ported barrel, five inch, 40 Smith & Wesson. Right now I got it fixed with a Burris red dot optic. Um, I'm not used to shooting handguns with a uh, with electronic optic, so uh, this will be an interesting experience for me. Getting ready to put the first hundred through this thing, maybe more. We'll see. Let's get started.
Wow, well that, were, that was the first 45. That went quick, didn't it? There's a, uh, of course, this optic's not sighted in yet, so my hits are a little low uh, to the red dot, but they look like they're pretty much point of aim, point of impact for the actual three dots uh, on the fixed sights. Co-witnessing between this Burris Fast Fire 3 and the, uh, the fixed sights is pretty decent. You can definitely tell where everything is. Um, so I just need to take a little time, obviously, to get this optic sighted in. I may or may not play with that in a uh, great extent today, but um, you know we're pretty close. I'm, I'm hitting a couple inches low at uh, between 7 and 10 yards. I have two targets, one at 7, one at 10, um, and uh, the hits are about the same on each. A little bit more spread at 10 than they are at 7, but it's got that great M&P ergonomic feel, certainly. Um, I haven't changed the palm swell or back strap out yet. I typically will go to the small. Uh, this still has the medium on it. I don't find it to be uncomfortable and I find the trigger reach to be very comfortable for me. Um, the trigger is really nice on this thing. You know, M&Ps probably get bashed as much as anybody on the triggers and this one, the guys in the Performance Center, guys and gals, sorry, um, in the Performance Center have done a fantastic job of really tuning this trigger in pretty nice. It's, uh, it's got a short, uh, very short stroke, short take up, a very, very crisp break. Um, and uh, the reset is incredibly short and crisp. So uh, you could definitely double, triple tap with this pistol. Um, and I'm going to see if I can't maybe do a little bit of that before the day's out. Well, like I said, that was the first 45. It went quick. Let's load these mags up again and play some more. So traditionally on a first hundred, I like to show some superimposed target, uh, you know, or picture in picture target shots. And I haven't done that yet with this one, uh, just because, you know, as I said, this optic is really not sighted in. It's hitting, looks like about maybe three to four inches low, but I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to put a camera on a target just for fun. So, so we can take a look at that. Cause just watching me shoot without seeing any impact to me is kind of boring. So I don't know what you guys think. You have to let me know, but let's do that. I'm going to take headshots at this target and, uh, I do expect them to hit low, so probably you want to watch around the neck area because that's where I think they were, they're probably going to hit. That's, of course, assuming I can hold it where it needs to be. Okay, 10 yards, M&P, Performance Center, 40, Smith & Wesson, ported barrel. 
So I'm just going to hold my dot on that square dot. And I should hit probably around right around the neckline. Okay, just just a quick review of the target here. This is the main target I used. I used two, um, but this is the one where I did most of my slow fire. And you can see that the gun is sighted, or the optic right now is is hitting at about seven o'clock position. That square one inch uh, center was my aim point. I was trying to hold the dot right on that square. But you can see where all the rounds hit. But good grouping. And then uh, when I did some headshots, of course similar putting the entire group at about the seven o'clock position this was predominantly at 10 yards on this target i did take some further back at like 15 or so but mostly this was 10. So there we go, Smith & Wesson Performance Center, M&P, 40 Smith & Wesson, 40L to be exact, ported, core, first 100 rounds, actually that ended up being the first 200 rounds, and if I didn't have somewhere else to be later today, it'd probably be the first 500 rounds. This is a fun gun to shoot. My optic needs to be dialed in. I didn't have the right uh, screwdriver with me to do that today, so uh, I didn't really worry about showing a whole lot of target hits. You can see the targets behind me. The grouping was good, um, even though it was a little more at the 7 o'clock position than uh, point of aim. But uh, it looks like from what, you know, just my co-witnessing with the um, stock sights on this thing, looks like those sights are dead on. As far as shooting flat, boy, this thing really does feel flat when you shoot it. Um, I'm actually interested to look at this footage myself because I like to watch the muzzle lift just to see. But uh, for 40, um, you know, especially starting out with factory loads, and I gradually worked my way through different factory loads uh, from Freedom Munitions and Federal American Eagle, and then started shooting some hand loads, some of my own competition loads, um, which obviously are going to be a little lower in pressure. But um, it really felt flat with those. This would be a, one heck of a competition gun. I think this might be a really, really nice steel shooting gun, um, especially once I get this optic dialed in. I get this sight dialed in to being right on zero at say 25 yards or so, um, then boy, this is gonna be a whole lot of fun. Super, super good quality. I only had one uh, malfunction with the pistol and that was a um, failure to fully feed. That was with one of my hand loads. So um, I always will fault the hand load rather than the pistol. So that's it. Um, 
everything performed flawlessly. Again, we've got the ergonomics of the M&P, which are, to me, among the very best in handguns. Um, I like the more aggressive back strap that you get on the Pro Series and the Core Series and the Performance Center Series. Um, it still needs a talon grip, and yes, I do have the talon grip already on order, so we'll get a talon grip around the front part of this stock, and uh, we'll get this optic dialed in, find a holster for it, and then I'll be in good shape. Stay tuned for more on this guy. always gets really noisy right when I turn the cameras on. It's just always the way. Does that work that way for you other guys?